Hello everyone. My name is Leo with SuperTech. I've got an Xbox One X console here. I actually purchased online off of eBay. I got the listing right on the actual screen. I spent about $130. That included about the shipping costs uh, along with the actual taxes that uh, that the government charges and whatnot. So I spent a little a little bit too much for my liking, honestly, on this specific console. Um, and I honestly don't remember what the actual issue was. It says Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Xbox One X for parts, no power. All right, so it looks like it's just a no power issue. Now, um, I literally just got through opening this, this console. I took it out of the box. The box is on the floor. Uh, you can't see it, but it's back there. Took it out of the box, and I decided to actually do a video to see if we can actually go ahead and get this console repaired. Uh, why did I spend this money? Honestly, I don't have to spend this money on these consoles since I'm already getting several consoles that are being shipped in to me and I'm actually staying busy with having a full-time job along with having to do repairs for customers since I'm actually offering the service. Um, <coughs> but guess what? I received this package. Might as well go ahead and get it over with. Um, first impression, the case, it's in really bad shape. It looks like somebody took... I don't know, a cigar, cigarette, or something hot and burnt the case from up top. Um, other than that, uh, it, you know, it's got a dent there, a dent right there. The CD drive from the inside looks to be good, at least from what I can see visually here. Um, and it's missing the back, the back plate plastic. Uh, HDMI ports, both of them actually look good. USB ports look good. Everything else looks good. Um, I don't know what's going on with this Xbox. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know what's going on with the Xbox One X. But let's see if, in fact, this console actually does not have power. Alrighty, now that you're back from watching my intro, let's see if this console actually has power. So what I'm gonna do is actually just plug in a my power cable, regular power cable to the back of this console. I'm not even gonna plug in an HDMI cable. I heard something spin as soon as I plugged that in. Something's spinning here. There is in fact no power. Excuse me. Excuse my cough. It's, it's itching and it just triggers me to cough. So when I try to press the power button, there is definitely no power. I do hear something here though. I have a feeling that the issue with this console is probably going to be a bad hard drive. But normally if it's a bad hard drive, you would at least hear the beep sound and attempt to boot up and probably possibly go down. Uh, let's, open this, let's open up this console though and let's see if in fact that is the case. Now I also noticed that the screws are actually missing from the back. So this console is actually gonna open up fairly easy. I do have spare parts that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna, repla I'm gonna replace that, this entire case honestly. Uh, have a, a very nice case that I'm gonna put for this console. Uh, not just the top, but possibly the bottom as well. In this case, if it didn't have this here, and maybe I'll try to sand it down and whatnot. I'm not going to throw this, this case away. I'm going to try to sand it down because it's a real deep, so you can see it's really, really a real deep burn right there. So I'm going to have to sand it down quite a bit. And if I can manage that, hey, I can probably use it for... A spare part. <clears throat> Alrighty, so since I know that you guys actually seen several consoles being taken apart, I'm not gonna put you through that. So what we're gonna do is actually just take this console apart completely, time lapse it to where you don't spend too much time watching me take it apart. Alrighty, let's take it apart. Alrighty, so first inf impression here, uh, I do see that the fan itself is really, really, really dirty. 
Um, I am gonna have to clean that, of course. I'll do that afterwards, though. Uh, first things first, what I'm gonna test is actually the hard drive, which is right underneath the actual optical drive. Um, we're gonna test the hard drive because I did hear the hard drive, and I believe there is a, a sound coming from this hard drive. So I believe the issue most definitely is going to be this, this hard drive here that's causing the console not to power up. Uh, and it looks like <clears throat> the hard drive was taken out before. It is missing two screws here. Um, this is a one, <laughs> trying to see here. It is a one, tar one terabyte hard drive. Let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and take it out of the casing, put it into my caddy and see if in fact the issue was the, the hard drive itself. All right, so we've got the hard drive out of the caddy. Let me go ahead and uh, plug it in. Just turned it on and let's get to the screen where we see the software for it. Alrighty, so we do have the hard drive showing up, but it's showing with nothing, no information on this specific hard drive. There's no health information. Uh, performance, temperature, nothing's actually coming up. So that already tells me that there's something going on with this specific hard drive. So what we're going to do, rather than doing anything else with this specific, uh, proceeding with anything else <clears throat> with this specific console, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a hard drive that we already have pre-configured <clears throat> for an Xbox console. And let's see if in fact this was the actual problem. And this is pre-configured for an Xbox fat. I can always change the the animation though uh, off of it. That's not a problem. We're gonna see if in fact this hard drive was the problem. That's all we've done so far. Oh, and I forgot to change this. Oh, there we go. We got some information on the hard drive. 4% <coughs> health. Yeah, definitely. That was the issue. All right. So I went ahead and grabbed a hard drive that I already had pre-configured already from a prior attempt on a different console. And the issue was in the hard drive. So this console is pre-configured for a uh, Xbox One Fat. Uh, it's all the same. It's, it's got the OSU one uh, uh, download from the from the Xbox website. Went ahead and formatted the hard drive, put all the files in there. We're going to see if we can actually get this to actually turn on and boot. Uh, if if you if you guys did not know, the hard drive can also be a cause to why the console doesn't power up at all. Like like doesn't have signs of life. The hard drive can definitely cause that. Uh, so right now, all we did was just change the hard drive. We're gonna put this power uh, board back on here, the power button board. Uh, I'm also gonna put the, uh, the Wi-Fi card here as well. We wanna make sure that uh, we get everything to boot up. I'm gonna leave it open. I'm not gonna close it, I'm gonna leave it open. I don't, and I forgot the eject button that's in here. That's fine. We want to know if so we have signs of life here. So, and um, OSU one. I've got the OSU one here, which I'm going to plug in actually to the back of this, because if we have it, we might as well update this now and just make this uh, make the uh, this uh, hard drive part of this Xbox because uh. This Xbox, of course, eventually I am going. I am going to sell it. So, why not? Alrighty. So we've got the HDMI cable. I'm gonna plug in this power uh, cable in here. Uh, let's hope I don't get electrocuted here.
think the issues can be the power supply. The power supply is bad. The power supply is definitely bad. There's not going to be any power right now. Well, there is power. But it shuts off. There's definitely a problem with the power supply as well. So there's an issue with the with the hard drive and an issue with the power supply. Let me grab a known good power supply. Remove this one. Removing this power supply. Give me just a second, let me go ahead and grab a power supply real quick. Alrighty, so we've got a known good power supply here. It is a bit dirty. I did take it off of a console that was previously in pretty, pretty, pretty bad shape. But I know that this power supply actually works though. So I'm gonna put the power supply here. There we go. Let's put the fan in here. There we go. Let's try it out now. Let's see what happens. All right. I don't hear any sounds like I did before. Let's see if it'll turn on. I see the white lights on. I'll see that it's booting. Well, not booting on the screen, but like spinning. That's what I meant. Oh, my, my apologies. We've got the microphone here. I see that it's spinning. Uh, let's see if we have any. Uh... I'm grabbing here a controller real quick. As a matter of fact. Uh, I don't have the sync button. Oh, I turned off. No, it did not turn off. It just blinked. Let me get uh, this controller over on this other USB. Okay. We got the controller going. Lights on on it. And let's see if we see anything on the screen. Do we have anything on the screen? I see a black screen. That's all I'm seeing. Please don't tell me we also have a, an HDMI issue. Probably the timer. Could be a possibility. Let me turn it, turn it off and then turn it back on. All right, we're turning this console back on. We see lights, hope the lights on. Uh, yes, we do have an issue here with the HDMI. I don't see, and I'm not getting any signal whatsoever from the HDMI at all. So what I'm using here, and I'm trying to see if I can pull this up to show you guys. <clears throat> um, I won't be able to. So I've got this, this here is a, a HDMI tester, it's a tester. So you can see these lights, except for the HPD is actually green. These other two lights here need to be green as well. And I have no signs, no sign of these two lights being on. And also this light needs to be red, RX2. Unfortunately, those lights are not on. So that tells me that if there's something going on with either the HDMI port or the retimer chip. Or there is an SD chip as well that could that could go bad, but I've never had one of those actually go bad at all. Um, so there's something else going on with this specific console. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this console off. First thing, first thing we're gonna do is um, check the HDMI port to see if maybe the HDMI port is the actual problem. Check on the inside with the microscope. And of course, check the internals, uh, the internal pins as well. If they seem to be good, then the issue most likely is going to be the retirement chip, which we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, replace as well. So let's go ahead and get to that. 
Alrighty, so I had to stop the time lapse here because it does look like someone attempted to fix this <laughs> this console. I just hope that they did not make a mess out of this. Sorry, my chair. I still have not bought one. Uh, I will eventually buy one once uh, finances are a bit better. But that being said, uh, I don't know if any of you guys have seen, and I, I don't think you can clearly see it on camera, but this thermal paste has a green tint to it. I've never seen a thermal paste that has that's 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 colored green. So I don't know what they put in here. I don't believe this is thermal paste. I don't know what this is. And I do see a lot of flux in the HDMI retimer area. So I have a feeling that they attempted to replace the retimer chip and I don't know. I'm hoping they didn't mess up uh, any of the components at all. So let's go ahead and get to the uh, microscope. We're not even gonna waste any time. Actually, yeah, let's let's get to the microscope. Check the HDMI port from the inside and we're gonna look at the, the pins themselves. And then we're gonna see exactly what they did here in the retimer chip area as well. All right, first things first, we're checking on the inside of this HDMI port. So the HDMI port is right over here. And I know that it looks sideways. Unfortunately, I don't have any other way of being able to see this because, well, actually we probably can. There we go. All right, so the HDMI port from the inside, it doesn't look bad at all. It actually looks good. Looks in pretty good condition. Now let's look at the board, the HDMI port. here I am not sure what all they did here let me brighten the lights a little bit more wow what exactly did they do here I certainly spent way too much on this console with all this mess that was left behind. I don't know what the problem is going to be with it, honestly, because I don't know if there's going to be any components, if there's going to be several components missing. And if this chip here is not good I do have a donor board I can take it off of what is this it's a plastic piece from something I hope what I'm seeing here is just flux and the person probably just didn't know how to clean off the flux it does look like they attempted to replace the retimer chip, but they did not do a good of a job because look at these pins here. These pins aren't even touching. Those pads are not even touching. They probably touch, but you need to have some solder there here as well. Let me see if I can clear that up for you. Right over here, you can tell these, these pads here as well, they're empty. There's no solder there. No solder here either. So whomever replaced this retirement chip did not do that very good of a, of a job. And also, this is uh, an Xbox, this is an Xbox uh, One X. So the Xbox One X, is it the 75D? Let me validate that real quick. I thought it was the, one, uh, the TDP-158. Give me a second here. Let me check. All right, so I've got... I've got a fully functional board here. Let's see. I think it's a TDP-158. I don't recall. Yep, it is. It's a TDP-158. Can't see it clearly.
TDP 158. That's what you put on an Xbox One X. Can you guys see that? So the Xbox One X, you put a TDP. <sighs> My apologies. I keep I keep forgetting to put this uh, this microphone back on. Got to get used to it. So Xbox One X uses a TDP 158 chipset, and the chip that this board has the, that was placed on this specific Xbox One X is a 75DP159. That is the incorrect chip. That's not going to work. That is not going to work at all. Not only is it not going to work, they don't have the solders on them properly. Like if they didn't solder it properly. Um, let me zoom out real quick so I can show you show y'all the mess. Can you guys see this mess here? This is I don't know what this is. This is uh, an atomic bomb that just went off here. And I'm hoping this ship here did not go bad. I do have one, but I would I would hate to have to use it on this board. But if I have to, I will. All right, first things first, what I'm going to do is actually clean this board up. Before I do any work on this board, I'm going to clean it up real quick. I'm going to clean this board up to make sure that I know what I'm working with. If I have any missing components, I wanna be able to see that, so. Alrighty, so we've got this board completely cleaned and it's looking a thousand times better from what it was looking like before. Uh, I will say this though, it looks like we do have, and what is this over here? That's a plastic piece, okay. Uh, I was gonna say, it looks like we have a missing component here, but no, we don't. That was just something that was stuck there that for some reason was still stuck even when, even after cleaning it did not want to move okay it looks good or at least better than what it looked like before all right, so we know the issue. It's going to be this uh, retimer chip. They've got the wrong retimer chip there. So first things first, we got to remove that retimer chip from there. That's the retimer chip that's there. It's not the appropriate one. So let's go ahead and get that removed. Normally, what I tend to do is add so uh, flux before removing it. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. And that is only because... Uh, I don't know what type of solder they put on there. I don't think it's going to be that uh, type of so uh, let it free solder. I believe it's maybe, hopefully, they change the solder to I'll let it solder. We'll find out right now. Let's go ahead and get it removed, though. All righty. We have the, uh, we've got the chip removed. The wrong chip that they put on there, which was the 75 DP159, which that is actually for an Xbox One, uh, Xbox One S console, not for the Xbox One X. Once again, the retimer chip or the Vita encoder chip that you actually get for the, uh, let me change the screen. The retirement chip you actually get th that goes to the Xbox One X. It is a TDP one, uh, TDP one fifty eight. It's what goes on the actual Xbox One X, not 
uh, not the 75 PD uh, 159. That is for the Xbox One S. So let me repeat that one more time. For those of you that actually attempt to do this, this <coughs> excuse me, this sort of repair on your device, that's fine. You know, it's your device. You do you do with it what you will. Um, but do some research though. Make sure that you are ordering the right part before you actually put it on the board as well. So for an Xbox One X, the video encoder chip, IC chip that actually goes on an Xbox One X, it is a TDP 158. But for an Xbox One S, it is the 75 PD 159. Um, and I'm checking because I've got the part numbers labeled on here. I don't know them off the top of my head, but I do know what they look like. So yeah, it is a it is 75 PD 159. So that is what you get. That is what goes on an Xbox One Xbox One S, not the X. Alrighty. That being said, let's me, let's go ahead and prep this uh, pads uh, the pads along with the uh, the uh, ground pad on this uh, board and get the right uh, chip on here. So first things first, what I'm going to do, of course, to get this prepped. We are going to remove the solder that's on here completely. Um, and I'm not going to add regular leaded solder to this right now because it looks like it already has regular leaded solder. Um, what I'm going to do is actually just add some flux, grab my wick, and wick it up. <coughs> wick it. Basically remove the solder that's on there. Um, I did fail to mention the temperatures I'm using for my hot air. Hot air station, I'm using 770 Fahrenheit. I am in the US, so we use Fahrenheit. And the airflow I'm using, it is 720% uh, airflow. I'm using the max airflow, and that's because it heats up the board quicker, and I'm able to extract the, uh, the chip a whole lot quicker. Now, there is some instances, and you have to know when exactly you would do this, but there's some instances where you would have to lower the airflow um, and possibly also the heat as well. But for this, right now, I'm using 770 Fahrenheit and 120 um, airflow. Alrighty, uh, so for my tweezer, I am using 750 Fahrenheit for my hot, uh, my, uh, not the tweezer, but the, uh, my hot iron. Um, and yeah, and I'm using a H Hako FM203. I do have uh, the equipment I use. I did uh, create links for them I did I do also have an affiliation now with Amazon I applied for it and they approved it so if any of you guys want to help the channel out in any shape way or form uh, you know whether it's by subbing and hitting the like button uh, if you do that I really really do appreciate it that actually helps the, helps the channel out tremendously um, but if you want to help the channel out even further and if you're interested in doing this sort of work, you can certainly um, go to my links to any of the equipment that I buy. You can save one of those links, actually, because what it means is that anytime you buy something, whether it's the item that I have on the link um, or just any other item, while you're still in the link that uh, I, I put on my description below, then that will help the channel out tremendously as well. I mean, it's just a percentage, but... It'll definitely help the channel out. Alrighty, so we went ahead and completely wicked out, wicked off, removed the solder that was on there. Off of that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the end of this wick. I would like to leave it ready for the next time I use it, and let's go ahead and clean this burnt flux real quick. Now, one other thing that's concerning me right now, and I have to uh, zoom in a little bit more right now, is this pad at the end here. I hope we didn't lose continuity on that pad to where it needs to go. So I'm about to check right now. Let me grab my prongs here, and I have it on continuity mode. Let me uh, 
uh, get a better, okay, there we go. Let me go ahead and test here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put one prong on the actual pad and I'm gonna test it against these, okay, we still have continuity, so that's good. Okay, that's good. <clears throat> that is good. All right, let's go ahead and zoom back out. Get back to what we were doing here. So we got the pads there. We're going to go ahead and add some flux. And we're going to add some uh, regular lead solder to this. We do have our fume extractor on, and we're going to start with these pads here. Alrighty, so we already have flux on here already. So what we're going to do is actually lower, and this is the point where you would know, okay, do I lower the temperature, or not, or the, uh, the, the airflow? You know what, I was going to lower the airflow, but I'm not. Let me go ahead and grab the uh, chip real quick. Make sure I grab the right one here. Don't wanna make the same mistake of grabbing the wrong one. As the person that sold me this console did. All right, we grabbed a chip. Let's make sure we have it. Now, the way we know the orientation it goes, if you guys actually see here, this white dot, that is pin number one. So that means pin number one is here. And there's also a dot on this chip, which is right there at top left corner. So that means we gotta spin this chip around. This is the rod orientation of this chip, like that. So what we're going to do is heat up this board first, let some of the solder melt, and then we'll put the chip right on top of it. All right, so the chip is now seated on there. So what we're going to do is actually add some flux. And we're going to let the chip flow on its own to the proper, proper pads. <coughs> Let's put some heat on it. Alrighty, I'm going to move the hot air out real quick. Let it, let it harden and then we're going to press on it to get all the excess solder out. And that's that. All we gotta do now is just clean all the pads from the side, make sure that they're all touching properly and remove this uh, solder ball that, that are here and clean it up. So to do that, of course, we add some flux. All right, come on flux, stay. Alrighty, so you've got all the pads uh, properly soldered on this board. We validated that they are all touching. Now the only one I have that has me a bit concerned is this one here. 
But I think it's good. I don't think it's touching ground. Yeah, I think it's good. We're going to go ahead and get this uh, chip cleaned up real quick. And then we're going to test. Alrighty, so we've got this board cleaned as, as, as we as much as we possibly can. Only thing we have to do now is actually test these um, EMI filters right over here. You need to make sure that we still have continuity and the EMI filters coming from the HDMI port into the retirement chip and that they didn't burn out. Uh, that can certainly happen. So I've got, of course, my multimeter here in diode mode. You'll see it in the screen as well. And we're just going to be testing continuity between each each end. So this end needs to have continuity with this in here. So that side is good. And I'm also going to test continuity from here to the pin. Awesome. And my filters are good. So now the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and put the, the board together enough to test to see if we uh, have a, an, a display, an image. So that being said, let's clean this board up real quick. Uh, put some actual uh, thermal paste. And uh, we will test right afterwards. Alrighty, we've got everything plugged in. Everything we need to test. Uh, let's go ahead and plug the HDMI cable and power cable. <laughs> awesome. Let's go ahead and test to see if we have image. Uh, let's go to the right screen. And let's press the power button now. Power button is pressed. Don't see anything yet. Just validated the HDMI cable. It is plugged in. I still don't see on the tester here. I still don't see the lights. So there's still something definitely wrong here. So I've got the board again underneath the microscope because I need to validate to make sure that this retirement chip is actually in there. The one pin that actually has me a bit concerned is that that last pin at the end. I'm afraid that it could be touching a component that should not be touched. Oh, I see the problem. Look at the mess I made. I did not route this properly. You see that? I'm not a rookie, but look at the mistake I just made right there. I need to flow this properly. Let me uh, let me flow it correctly. We all make mistakes, y'all. We all make mistakes. I can definitely uh, criticize myself as well or be hard on myself as well uh, let me put some flux on this
Alrighty. They all look good. So let's clean the board up again. And let's test again. Alrighty, y'all. Uh, moment of truth. Let's see if this is going to work. Um, I don't know if you guys actually saw, but I did screw up the initial uh, solder. And I admit to it. I, I don't know. I'm exhausted, probably. I'm very, very tired. Uh, I did screw up. I'm looking at the... Uh, I'm looking to see if this will change right now as soon as I press this power button. If we'll see any lights come on over here for this HDMI cable. Hopefully I didn't screw anything up at all. Um, plug this in here just in case. And the LSU 1 uh, thumb drive as well. Alright, let's press this power button and let's see if we see these lights come on over here. These two lights. Power button's on. Still no lights. I don't know if this is going to work, honestly. Still no lights. Thinking something's going to be shorted. I'm going to have to go back and actually see and view what could possibly be shorted. But either from the bad chip of 75 PD 159 being on there. And then for me not soldering this properly, I don't know if, you know, a component actually fried or maybe the overheat that the prior owner did as well. Something, something must have gotten fried. We don't know what though. Uh, and I'm going to have to do a little bit more research to see what's not, what's not allowing this console to display. I did validate already the uh, TDP-158, the retirement chip to make sure that it was soldered on properly this time. And it was. There's still no display at all. We've already replaced it once, unless for some odd reason, I, gr I got a retirement chip that's no longer good and probably possibly needs replacing again. But tonight is actually too late, so I'm gonna Leave this video for now and come back to you guys in the morning. For you guys, it'll be a second. For me, it's not going to be till the next day. So I'll be seeing y'all on the next section of this video. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're back here. It's uh, the following day, early, early, early morning. It's uh, actually around uh, 3 a.m. Um, alrighty. So last night I couldn't sleep. There, I don't know why, but... This retirement chip, uh, kept thinking about it, how it wasn't fully, it had some missing of the conformal coating and it's touching, I believe it's the same, the pad that actually goes towards that pin, but I'm going to validate that real quick. I may end up having to fill it up with some conformal coating. So I do have here, um, a donor board and let me go to it real quick. So I can show you exactly what I was talking about. So this, of course, did not work. And I don't know if the issue is this pad right over here. This one. How it's touching all this other area here. And I don't know if it's touching any of this. Which I don't think there's nothing here. It's just nothing but confirm a coating. But it's touching over here. And then we did do a... Uh, dial test between or con continuity test between here and these uh, capacitors over here and they were in fact uh they did have a, continu a, co a continuous path now i need to make sure that in fact that is exactly what it's supposed to be doing though um so let me grab the donor board And I've got here my prongs. Let me put this in diode mode here. There we go. So what we're going to do is actually test this end of the pin with these capacitors. And they sure enough it is going there, so that's not the issue. That is not the issue. 
So what I need to do then is validate to see if there's any other components. Actually, I need to confirm that this HDMI port on, on this other board, the one I'm working on, is actually good because that's one thing we did not validate either. We did not validate that this <coughs> HDMI port was good. That is, was actually touching. You know, that none of the pins were loose. Alrighty, so what I'm going to do right now is just test to see if any of these pins are actually loose. So we're going to do a tug test. None are loose. Let me check it if any of them for any reason are bridged. Only thing I'm seeing here is possibly these filters maybe need some additional um, solder. But let me see if we've got a continuous path though between here and the chip. So this one goes through this filter here, goes this pin. Does go through this filter, comes out through here and touches here so that's good this one here comes from here goes through this filter touches here that one's ground this one comes through here we got and we'll test the ground one as well this ground of course so long as you touch, touch the HDMI port, that's ground. And then lastly for that filter, that one goes through here, comes and touches here. I know the filter depth you guys won't be able to see most of it. I'm actually having to follow the trace, which is why I'm zoomed in. For that, my apologies. Um, but it's more important that I see and actually test than you guys for now. All right, so I'm gonna do this filter as well. Comes through here. Touches this end of the filter. Yep, and then this one comes through here. Goes through the filter. Yep, and then we've got ground. Yep, and then lastly, this one here. All right, so the left side of this, um, the left side of this retirement chip is perfect. Let's test these here. We're gonna follow these traces to see, to make sure that they're making a connection. So this one, Goes to this end of the cap. That's good. This one, I don't know where it's leading to, but it goes here. Uh, let me grab my X Acto knife real quick. Just need to expose just a tad bit of copper there.
All right, let me check my donor ball to see if we have any missing components here and or here. We do not have any missing components there, here, and or here. That's how it is. We do have this cap. We got these two resistors. We've got nothing missing. Everything's testing the way it's supposed to test. Alrighty, so the chip is it's soldered on properly. Uh, it's making a connection. They've been verified. We've tested the filters tested the cap surrounding the area we've tested from the pins themselves from, from these pins themselves all the way to the to the chip everything seems to be good um, I don't know what I don't know what else besides possibly that ST chip but I'm trying to avoid from taking this chip here which I'm thinking this may be it I'm trying to avoid from having to take this chip off of the board. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to avoid from having to take it off because I do have the donor board, of course. That donor board actually works. The reason why I'm considering that board as being a donor board is because... When I purchased it, apparently the it came with an optical drive that did not belong to that Xbox One X, so basically it becomes a brick. Uh, if you don't have the original uh, daughter board, optical drive daughter board that you can replace with a new optical drive, if if the optical drive is bad. Unfortunately, it becomes a break because now it's asking for an update and then when it asks for an update, there, there's no bypassing that that I'm aware of. Now, there is a way to bypass this if, if in case this is this chip. I personally don't know exactly how to bypass it though. Um, I do know that there is a, a channel that I watch. His name is uh, the channel's name is the coder. His name is Phil. The channel's name is uh, Decoder, the Decoder, or the Coder. Um, and he shows that on one of his videos how to bypass this ST. So I'm gonna have to honestly have to go back and try to view one of his videos and see exactly how this is bypassed here. This this ST chip. Other than that, one of the things I'm going to try right now before anything, before I do anything, because everything's testing properly. Everything, everything's test, testing good. One of the things I am going to do is actually um, test, not necessarily going to my, uh, going to my, to my uh, capture card, but test going straight to the TV to see if maybe it has something to do with my capture card to why I wasn't displaying. Ah, I just got, wow. I just put my hands all over this, uh, thermal, thermal paste. All right, all right, everyone, we're back. All righty, so... <clears throat> We've, this is the third, the third attempt, of course, on uh, repairing this console. Um, I tried again this morning, and uh, well, we could not. Excuse me. Uh, we could not figure it out to what exactly was going on with this specific board. Uh, we reflowed basically, or we replaced the retomer chip. Uh, we also validated. Uh, that the HDMI port was communicating basically with the uh, perspective uh, points, endpoints that they were supposed to be communicating with, meaning we checked continuity between HDMI port to the uh, perspective, you know, points, whether it's the retirement chip or from the retirement chip to, um, to capacitors, resistors, wherever they're leading to and we tested continuity, uh, and they tested successfully. They, they tested properly. I thought maybe because yesterday, whenever I put in the the uh, retirement chip incorrectly, meaning it wasn't seated properly, I thought maybe I could have caused that chip to have gone bad, the retirement chip. Uh, 
but that wasn't the case. This is the second retirement chip we've already put on there. Uh, this is the other one we took off, which if that's not the case, it means this retirement chip is still good. So we're not going to get rid of this retirement chip. We, we can still use it for future jobs. So we have to uh, repair a, a, a retirement chip uh, board. So definitely the problem is going to be this chip here. Um, I did also uh, try and this uh, I, I tried doing this off off of uh, the camera. I tried uh, reflowing the ESD IC chip um, and that did not work. So I don't know if maybe I just need to uh, reball it. So what we're going to do is actually take it off. Um, I don't know if I have a stencil for it. I know that there's a way to there is a way to bypass it without having to use a uh, an ESD chip. But I have an ESD chip over here, so I'm gonna try actually removing this one. I'm gonna reball it. Try reballing it. I'm so I don't know if I have a stencil. I'm gonna have to look for one. Try reballing it. Put it back on here, and see if that works. If that doesn't work, at least we've tried with this one, and we'll see if we fail or if we pass. If we do good with this one, meaning that if we actually reball it properly, then I'll take this one from this board out and put it on here. I know that one works. I know that one's functioning. Uh, but we're gonna try reballing this one though. So let me get under the microscope and let's go ahead and take this uh, ESD chip out. All right, so we got the ESD chip right here. Basically, the, this chip, it's, you know, and of course I've watched uh, 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 videos from other repair people and of course that's uh that's how you gain your experience by learning from others and you implementing it as well uh, i did watch uh the person's name he goes by the name of uh, the coder and he's actually pretty good he's a pretty good console repair person um so i watch him of course i've watched several of the ipad repair people as well because that's uh initially that was my path was to go with uh, mobile device repairs, but I decided to change my path and just do co concentrate solely on console repair for now as components for console repairs. They tend to be a bit bigger. It's a lot easier for me to do uh, board work versus uh, an Apple device being really, really, really small components. So uh, it makes it a little bit more difficult for me to do mobile devices. So I said to myself, you know what, once I learned properly and 100% uh, confident, which I'm actually confident now with with these boards, then I'll start directing myself towards the mobile devices on board work. But first, there's uh, still quite a bit I need to learn though. I need to learn uh, basically, it's, it's gut knowing how to solder, it's gut knowing um, <clears throat> a little bit about the components, you know, like the capacitor, dials, filters, and all that. But you gotta learn as well what their readings are for like components and stuff like that. And that's what I'm working on right now. That's what I'm concentrating on. It's what to look for in certain components and what their readings should be. You know, what, uh, you know, what, what the current is, uh, that that's supposed to be passing through that specific component. So I'm still trying to learn all that right now, but let's get to this. Let's go ahead and remove this. We're going to reball this ESD, uh, IC chip right there. We're gonna remove it, reball it, and see if maybe we could uh, get it uh, fixed that way. I'm not gonna put any flux on this. I just wanna be able to remove this chip right now. Alrighty, let's go ahead and use a stencil. Let's 
put the stencil down to where it stays in place. There it is. <laughs> and now we just put some of this uh, salt, uh, solder paste on here. Okay, we got the solder paste there. Let's spread it. Let's spread the solder paste. Alrighty. Let's clean it up. Alrighty. We're gonna go ahead and heat it up. And let the solder balls attach to the chip. Alrighty, that should be cooled off enough. Let's make sure that no, these other ones did not get stuck there. Nope, they did not. So let's go ahead and pull off the chip slowly. Just to make sure that it moves. Is it moving? Yes, it is. It is moving. So I'm lifting up the stencil here. And I'm going to push on the chip down because I don't want the chip to get stuck on the stencil. There we go. Now we're going to clean the chip with some uh, IPA, and then the other solder balls should automatically come out, come off. There we go. That's how it's going to go. Okay. I'm going to lower the, once again, I'm going to lower the airflow. Airflow to 75%. Okay, it's in there now. We're gonna add some flux. And this is where we raise the airflow. Awesome. Chip is on, we're gonna let it cool off and then we're gonna test for shorts again. Hopefully we don't have any shorts, and hopefully it'll work. We'll see. We'll give it a we'll give it a uh, a few seconds here to let it uh, cool off normally. Now, if this doesn't work and this chip also gave out on me, the only option we have is to manually uh, run bypass basically this chip, this ESD. Uh, IC chip. Now, if we do bypass, and the only reason, the only reason why I say the only option we have is to bypass is because these chips are not sold. It's not a way of buying them, unfortunately. Um, so the only option we have is to extract from donor boards, and I've already extracted the only one I had from the only donor bo board I had of an Xbox One X. I don't believe these exist on an Xbox One S. I do believe they exist on the Series S as well as the 
Series X, but I don't have any of those boards either. So that being said, I've used up the only, um, the only uh, donor ESD chip I had. So if this fails, once again, only option is to bypass it, which I was trying to avoid from doing as well because I don't know, I know that it'll work, but I don't know if they'll have 4K capability, whoever owns this console, 4K capability. I don't know uh, if there could be any issues in the future um, and or, uh, you know, that goes in hand, in hand in hand with how long it would even last. Alrighty, I believe there's plenty of time there. Sure is. Let's warm it up. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to warm it up. I'm just going to go ahead and clean this board like that. All right, let me test for shorts. It is set to continuity, and we're just going to test for shorts here. Let's hope we don't have any. Okay, no shorts, so that's good. At least no shorts to ground. Let's check the capacitors themselves. Awesome. Alrighty, so we replaced the ESD IC chip. Let's go ahead and test to see if this board actually has any any uh, display life. <laughs> Alrighty, so we went ahead and took out and my apologies, I thought I was recording this entire time and I really wasn't. We went ahead and took out the uh, took out the uh, the ESD IC chip and we went ahead and did the bypass. I did the wire, the wire in here. It doesn't look good, but I believe it's gonna work. So what I'm gonna do right now is actually test continuity between uh, the wires to make sure that the wires aren't actually touching with each other. Which they may be touching with each other, but that there's no continuous path with them because I do have some of the wire that has enameled and I believe it should, it should protect it. So we're about to find out right now. So this wire here should not have, have uh, continuity here with this one. And it does not. We're testing continuity between this wire and this one. And there isn't. And then once again, this one with this one. And there isn't. I feel like I'm missing a wire here. There's one, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yeah, there's four of them. I think we're, we're set. So this one comes from here to there. There should be continuity between this and this. There is. Between here and here. There is. Between here and whatever this is. And here and pin 19. Let me see, pin 19 is way back here. And there is. Alrighty. Let's try this again. We're going to go ahead and test. If this fails, well, I don't know what else to do. I have to leave this for another day. Once again.
power cord, HDMI. See the five volt light on right away. Power, we've got power. Let me turn this light off so you guys can actually see as well. Right over here, we've got light. Oh, we got image and of course we've got an error code. So let's see if we can bypass this error code or at least get it <coughs> to update. Alrighty, so I'm back. Uh, back here with an update with this Xbox One X that we've been working on. Um, an E100 error message. It's uh, more than uh, the error message was uh, E100 50706 and then 806 towards the very end or something like that. 000806, something like that. I, I don't remember the exact code. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Um, I'm actually losing my voice here. Let me see if I can get the exact error code. The error code that I was getting was I sent it to a chat, you know, to see if maybe they can help or assist with how to further troubleshoot. They gave these people here from uh, the chat of the coder. They honestly gave a lot, a lot of good ideas to follow and they all seem to work uh, well not, I wouldn't say they all seem to work but those they all were awesome and good ideas that I managed to get this console up and going so the error message is E100 50706 8007002 that was the error code that I kept getting and I'll put that on the screen as well with regards to the actual error code that I kept receiving alrighty so a lot of things were done um, uh, to this console, we had already replaced the hard drive as well. That's another thing. It did have a bad hard drive, which we also replaced. So I put in a brand new one terabyte hard drive, formatted it, configured it using the script, um, uh, put it in here and still received the, <clears throat> the E100 error message. So I did that multiple times. Um, I also used a different hard drive, also a one terabyte, and still did not work. So I basically gave up on this console, waited till the following day, I posted a question towards them, and they gave me some really, really good ideas. One of those was, one of those was just use the daughter boat, because sometimes the, um, the laser could be causing a short to where you would get the E100 error message, and it doesn't allow the update whenever you install the hard drive. It doesn't allow the update to to further out from step three, which is 62 percent. Um, so I did that. Uh, just used the daughter board, took the daughter board off of the optical drive, put it on the board, still failed again. Um, so that I then decided, you know what, let me try an older version of OSU one when I did that. It gave me an error code E102. So that's normally what it fails to when you're trying to update with an older version of, of um, OSU. When I did that though, and then went ahead and updated the hard drive again with the proper, um, with the proper updated OSU, when I installed that hard drive, it was a 500 gig, also formatted it using a script, it then what it did what it did was continued when I installed it, turned it back on. It continued from step three on forward. Now it failed again though. But then what happened was when it failed, all I did was just restart the process and it actually completed. Now when I did that, I don't know what transpired there. Also, I did fail to mention that I did re-download afterwards. Um the newest version of OSU 1. I don't know if the version I had was old. The version I had, I downloaded on the 29th of September, so I'm thinking it's still good. I don't know if there's been an update since, but I went ahead and re-downloaded a newer version. I don't know if it's a newer version, but re-downloaded whatever version was on there. 
and put those versions onto the hard drive, basically reformatting it for the third or fourth time, put it onto the thumb drive that I was using to update, uh, and it completed it just fine. So somewhere in there, we found a solution for the optical drive, and now we have a fully functional, um, now we have a fully functional um, console. Let me go ahead and show you real quick. As you can see on the screen, it says all good now. We, I was able to basically go through the initial setup of this console. Um, well, still going through it, of course. <clears throat> and uh, it wants me to log in, but we've got image. Literally, we've got an image now on this console. Um, we're able to, I don't know if 4K capability is going to be available because what we did was we, we bypassed the ESD chip completely, but we've got it going. So that's good. Um, other than that, this console is basically com completely done. And I don't know if you guys remember this console came in with a really busted up, uh, <clears throat> really busted up case, which I'm not going to use for this console. So way towards the end, you'll see exactly how this console is actually going to look. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this process up. <coughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and not actually speed it up, but I'm going to go ahead and skip to the end and show you exactly how this console is going to look. All right. So it took me a while to get this console put together. I had to move some parts around. But voila, this is actually... The surprise I had. So this is the case. I actually had this case here for quite a while. Decided to go ahead and use it on this console. Uh, this is a Cyberpunk 77 case. No, it was uh, the game itself was a fail. But don't get me wrong. The arts that actually went towards this case, man, they were awesome. I, I, I like this case, so I decided to go with this specific case for this particular console. Now, the moment of truth, though. May look good and everything, but does it work? That's the main question. I know we saw the video earlier, but after pulling, put uh, after putting it fully back together, does this console still work? And I don't even have the microphone near me, so I know that didn't sound right. So once again, I say that this console looks good, but does it still look good? Uh, does it still play? Let's take a look. Let's take a look. I'm gonna press the power button. It's lighting up. It's always been lighting up. We got five volts. We've got the lights there. Uh, let me switch over the screen. <clears throat> I see a black screen. Oh man, I'm gonna have to open this again because I forgot to put the uh, the booting logo on this on the hard drive. But I'll do that off off camera though. Let's see if it's going to boot up for us. And there we go. Now let's see if uh, this console is going to uh, sync. If this controller, I mean, is going to sync with this console. Sync button is blinking and it took. There we go. Awesome. So this console, as it sits, it is fully fully functional other than that I know this video is probably going to be very 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 long for that I apologize in advance uh, I know you guys probably like shorter videos but unfortunately this console here did give me a lot of headache it did give me a lot of issues and we were able to fix every single one of those issues um, and just to provide once once again just a brief overview to everything we did to this console. So this console initially, of course, I did purchase it off of eBay. Um, I paid $99 for it, plus shipping, plus taxes, I think maybe 130-ish or so. That's what I'm adding the total amount to be. Not including the parts I put into this console, of course. So this console, I bought it for about 130, let's say with all fees and taxes. In there uh, this console initially was displayed as a no power issue 
Um, it certainly didn't have a it certainly didn't have power at all. Um, when we started the initial boot up, so then I went ahead and uh, replaced the power supply. When I replaced the power supply, we had power, so that fixed that problem. Now the next problem was there was no display. So upon opening this console, there were signs of the retirement chip being replaced. And there was a whole bunch of solder. And I'm sure you saw that at the beginning of the video. It's a lot of solder, a lot of mess that was left behind. I did clean all that up. So we, and also the retirement chip that was installed on this Xbox One X was the incorrect one. The one they installed was 75 DP, 159, which that is actually the incorrect video encoder chip. For uh, an Xbox One X, the video encoder chip or the retirement chip that goes on this console, it is TDP-158. That is the proper video encoder IC chip that actually goes on an Xbox One X. For the S, it is the 75DP-159. For the X, TDP-158. So I went ahead and removed that retirement chip, put in the correct one, we still had no display. Now, I did mess up on at the beginning when replacing the, the retirement chip. I left it out of line. I then fixed it properly. We still had no display. Kind of gave up that, that evening uh, with the console the following day. Went ahead and replaced it one more time thinking maybe because I left it out of line, maybe I shorted that uh, retirement chip. So I went ahead and replaced it again. Still no display. So that was not the problem. Went ahead and validated the filters um, to make sure that there was continuity going from the pins on the HDMI port to the to the uh, to the retirement chip, and also validated continuity on the other pins of the retirement chip to where they lead to, and they all tested properly. They all tested correct with uh, with continuity. So then validated the HDMI port from the inside as well as from from the inside of the actual HDMI port as well as the pins themselves to make sure that there was no loose pins and there was none. Um, so the, the HDMI port was actually good. No work needed to be done. So upon doing further research, uh, came across a forum where it said that um, another thing that can cause an old display is the ESD um, which on the chip itself it says ST on there, but it's the ESD um, IC chip, which basically acts like a filter. Um, I then reflowed that chip, still no display. So then went ahead and removed it. I try actually reballing that chip, but while doing so, I basically messed up the chip completely to where when I did solder it back on, the cap surrounding that chip we're now testing short. So then we went ahead and removed it. I took the uh, chip off of a donor board, which I still have back here. Put it on this one. Now we show display on the console, but it was only showing 640p. It was not showing anything higher than that on, on resolution. It wasn't showing 1080p. So that day, because this, this is a three-day process, that day I decided to... Give up on it, came back the following day, which is today, by the way, and we went ahead and um, remove the ESD uh, IC chip I had put in there with getting 640p resolution, and we decided to actually just bypass it. So I did reach out to um, a good channel I actually watch, uh, The Coder. He actually did this process. I believe someone else may have shared this uh, diagram with him but I saw him doing it, doing it live and I knew that existed so I decided you know what I reached out to them on uh, the uh, discord <clears throat> and asked to see if they can actually uh, share that that image and they did and I went ahead and completed a bypass on the um, completed a bypass on the ESD chip when I did that sure enough we had the proper display resolution 1080p that's all done. You know, we completed all that. I thought I was done. I was like, all right, let's go ahead and test. I got a, and we also replaced the hard drive. The hard drive was bad. I think it was given about 4% um, 
4% health, which that and in hand tells me that the hard drive itself was actually bad. So we also replaced the hard drive with a replacement one terabyte hard drive. Um, so we replaced the hard drive. I formatted the hard drive before putting it on here, before putting it on the console. And when turning it on and trying to boot with the OSU one um, um, USB and the proper formatting on the actual hard drive, it would fail with an error code 100. Now, I don't know how many of you guys have actually come across this error code. This would actually be my first time coming across it. That error code basically entails that there's an issue with an optical drive, or at least that's what most of the forums say that it has to do with the optical drive. But I can tell you that it does not only mean that the optical drive is bad because this optical drive is actually not bad at all. It's actually good. Um, to where when I reached out in the decoder discord, they did give me several tips, uh, to try to troubleshoot. And of course there were good tips, um, but none of them actually work. One of those was just take the daughter board completely out of the, uh, optical drive and just try boot, you know, trying doing the install process, just using the, the, uh, daughter board. It still gave me the same error message. Um, try different other uh, troubleshooting steps and I could not honestly get this uh, this um, hard drive to to install or the OSU one to install properly so then um, I basically gave up and that was this morning gave up on it came back this afternoon I decided to try something completely different I went ahead and went to the Xbox site downloaded the new SU one the, one, the version I had was from uh, from uh, September 29th, so it wasn't old at all. And I don't think they've uh, sent up. I don't think they've updated or sent an updated an update uh, recently. But I went ahead and grabbed on anyways. I went ahead and downloaded it, formatted the hard drive once again, as well as the OSU one USB. Went ahead and put the updated files on here because because both files need to match what's on the hard drive and what's on the USB thumb, uh, thumb drive as well. They need to match. If they do not match, it'll fail. So went ahead and updated the hard drive, formatted it, put the new files on there, updated the, the thumb drive, and also decided to use a different hard drive. Instead of using the one terabyte, I downgraded and actually used a 500 gig. When doing so, it actually completed. I don't know what fixed this problem, honestly. I went ahead and put the previous hard drive again, the one terabyte, which is what it actually has on right now. And it also completed as well. So I'm thinking the issue is the version of OSU one I had, the software for some reason was making it fail with an E100 error code, which of course in forums, when you go and read, it tells you that it's the actual optical drive when in reality, it may not even be the optical drive. So with the new OSU one files, I believe that it actually fixed the problem I was having. And now we have a fully functional console. So yeah, that is in brief, the actual summary for this console, this console, of course, I'm not giving it away. I'm actually going to gift this console to someone really, really close to me. Uh, my 17 year old daughter, she's been asking me for one, uh, for, um, uh, for Christmas. Um, I've put quite a bit of money into this console itself as if I would have bought a brand new one, basically a replacement, uh, power supply, hard drive, retimer, and rework on the, uh, on the, uh, uh bypassing the ESD. So a lot of time and sweat <coughs> and money went into this console to where I'm not gonna sell this console. I won't be making any money off of this console. I am going to gift this console to my oldest daughter and I hope she likes it. Hopefully she sees this video and she appreciates this console as much as I would appreciate it as well. And if she encounters any issues or problems with it, she knows she can come to me and I will repair this console for her. Other than that, that is it for this video. Once again, my apologies for the long video. 
do me a favor if you like this type of content go ahead and hit the like button as well as well hit the thumbs up button as well as don't forget to subscribe and <clears throat> I'm running out of my voice now and don't forget to hit that notification button so that when I do upload any videos whatsoever you guys actually get notified I'd appreciate it if you did that I will be doing a giveaway for a power supply I got a brand new power supply for myself this other power supply I've only had probably for about four or five months but I needed one that could also be displayed on on screen for you guys while recording videos this other one it's not a, a digital type of power supply uh, actually let me go ahead and show it to you this is the actual power supply right here is actually a really 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 good power supply nothing is wrong with this power supply I've only used for a few months um, I actually bought this power supply from iPad rehab and uh, it wasn't too long ago that I that I purchased it so I'm going to be doing a giveaway on this power supply versus selling it and getting some money back for the one I spent money on. I'm going to do a giveaway once I reach 1,500 subscribers. So that's an incentive for you guys. Once I reach 1,500 subscribers, what I'll do is I'll go online and I'll do to where it'll grab one of the subscribers. It doesn't matter which one, just one of the subscribers. It'll go through my 1,500 subscribers. It'll select one. I'll reach out to that subscriber, letting them know that they've actually won this power supply. Now, I will be doing other giveaways as well. Um, I want to be able to help the channel out, contribute to the community, the tech repair on anything that I personally come across. Um, and at the same time, of course, help the people out there. Maybe I'll even offer my services to someone that needs a console repair for free as a giveaway as well. You never know. Um, but I, right now, I do also sell my services for console repairs. So feel free to reach to me. Um, I do have all that information down below. Go to my website. You can go ahead and start the, uh, the um, register process of creating your profile, create a ticket, print that out, put it in with your console, ship it out to me. It takes me 24 to 48 hours. I'll work on that console and ship it right back. Customers are responsible for shipping here as well as for shipping back. Um, you can go to pricing. You'll see what the pricing is. The pricing that's there is for the pricing for the repair itself. Of course, not including taxes. It does not include as well the shipping costs to me or the shipping costs back to you. Um, that is a separate, separate fee. So, yeah, other than that, thank you very much for standing tuned and watching my video once again. And yeah, I'll be seeing I'll be seeing you on my next video guys. Peace.